God is saying to wait is to increase our trust in him. It reminds us that we are at the mercies of God's timing. And while we are waiting, he is working. Waiting on God is for our own good. It is to establish his good and perfect plans for our lives. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us as in Jeremiah 29, 11. I believe the hardest thing in our walk with Christ is waiting. Yet the scripture is clearly saying to wait. Sometimes in waiting we get impatient and begin to worry. And we know worrying is not of God. Instead, we should pray. We, should, we, we could sense what we should do. We could spend time in his presence. We have to realize that we cannot have success without the Holy Spirit, for he is our helper. And we have to allow him to help and direct us so that we can be effective. We also complain at times, but it does not shorten our waiting period. It just makes us sad. Fear is another factor that prevents us from moving ahead in life. We have to stay away from negative thoughts. They make us depressed and unhappy. In the Bible, we look, we see there are people who waited on God. Some examples are like David, he waited 15 years to become king. Moses also waited 40 years to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Sarah, she waited 25 years for her appointed child, which is Isaac. And we can go on, there are many more we can talk about in the Bible. And we can see there that they waited on God. And Psalms 27, 41 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Lamentation 3.25 also says, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. God wants us to keep our relationship with him alive and well every minute of every day. Don't let the little destruction of life pull you away from this. We are the happiest when our fellowship with Christ is as its strongest. Learning to wait to get what you want can be hard. We don't know if our answer is around the corner or a long way to come. So my encouragement is to let us wait, be patient, and don't lose hope. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. All you. So, coming to us from Mysticity, Quebec. Pastor Alfred, there he is. And so let us bless the Lord uh, to have him once again share the word of God with us here at Bethlehem. God bless you, my brother. God bless you all. Good morning, uh, my friends and brothers in the Lord. <laughs> morning. Thank you. Am I loud and clear? Yes. Yes. Uh, we we have been we've been read. Although the volume was a bit low, but it has been read. Uh, Ezekiel forty-seven one to twelve. And I thank God that I have the privilege again of sharing with us today the yes. word of God. Uh, it has been so because God chose this day that I may share together with us. I thank God for the previous sharing that has really encouraged me, and uh, I would like to be part of the <clears throat> the kingdom by so participating. Uh, the book of Ezekiel talks about uh, the prophecies that God gave Ezekiel through his angel. And uh, Ezekiel as a prophet, was actually ordained at a particular time that many prophets uh, in the Bible did not actually have a, a privilege like him. It may be called an odd time because the children of Israel were, were going a, a lot of uh, attack from uh, the enemies, especially the Babylonians. But he started well in, in Israel and uh, walked well and with a strong word because he was given a word of rebuke. And we know that he rebuked uh, the sinful nature of the way or the way they, they were living. And uh, he was so strong and his words were so strong. But when the captivity of Israel came, he was taken along uh, with the, the king and the family of the king to the, the land of uh, uh, Babylon. He didn't have an opportunity 
to preach or rather to focus on the prophecy that he was given because the prophecy if you read Ezekiel chapter 1 uh, Ezekiel uh, from um, chapter 1 he was actually appointed to the household of Israel and here is a case where now he's taken cap captive with the rest of the the Jew to the land of uh, the Babylonians and they were to stay there for 70 good years in fact he changed the the kind of approach from being a hard tackler to uh, an, an encourager he encouraged a lot of the jewish children that were going through a lot of hardship and in captivity including even the king and the family and today i want focus mostly on one particular uh uh, revelation that God gave him, and this is in uh, Ezekiel 47, 1 to 12, which we have just read. It was for then, but it is mostly, it was meant for our age today. Ezekiel's prophecy then was meant for our age today and for the kingdom to come. That is the, the, the promise that God has given us about his coming kingdom. I would like us to look at it closely as we go uh, step by step. Ezekiel says that he was uh, brought the angel, this man, then he brought me back to the door of the temple and behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was flowing down from below this, the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. This is a unique water because in Israel as a whole, we know that there was no water flowing from the temple of God. In, either, in any case, the water in Israel was a scarce thing because uh, the position in which Jerusalem was was semi-arid. And we know that this has a significance in our life because God did this purposely so that we may understand what it means by water flowing from the temple of God. And it's it, the spiritual direction that we want to take today will open up our eyes. That's why I gave this uh, uh, sermon a title that obedience to the leading of God. In our time, obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. And we have to know that when God leads us, it doesn't look real. And sometimes it looks just like a drop because when we say, when I say that, I mean, there was little drops of water coming from the temple. It was not such a great one. And the fact that it was coming from the temple and from the altar of God, it means that it was meant for particular purpose. Brethren, we are here all and we do go to our assemblies. We get the little drops of, of the living water. We get it on daily basis, but God wants us to see what this can do in our lives. There is a lot that we can achieve with the little that we get in the temple, with the little that we get in the gathering like this. The altar of God is in between us, and we know that where two or three are gathered, he is there in their midst. And Ezekiel, for one reason, knew that he has to be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit to understand the things of God. He said in, in, in verse 2 that uh, uh, then he brought me out of the way of, of the north, the northern gate, and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces towards the east. And behold, the water was trickling out on the south side. He's been given specifics from at the temple of God. And this temple of God was built with a lot of precision. If you go back there, I've studied the book of Ezekiel, and I saw that this temple of God was given with specifics. And the, uh, the, and the mansionry and the measurement was well spelled by God himself. Brethren, I want you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are designed to do a specific duty. And this duty, you cannot do it if you do not, do not follow or get the foundation from which you are coming. 
you are coming from the foundation laid by God. This temple was greatly laid by God in every measurement and every precision that God wanted this temple to be, right from the rooftop to the top of the ground and to the doors and the threshold and the doors and, and instructions on how, where and what to do at particular times. Therefore, he keenly followed this man. Then the man said <clears throat> uh, in, in verse 3 that going on eastward with a measuring line in the sand, the man measured a thousand cubits, then led me through the water, and it was ankle deep. This droplet of water, this oozing water from the temple, that little thing that you have received, that Holy Ghost that you have received, that you have a symbol, you have a sign of talking even in tongues, that sign, that little thing that you have can be rekindled into a flowing water. And we see here that this water is now flowing outside the temple towards the east, and it flows to the dry place and re reaches this, the, the, the river, uh, the, the, the sea. Now, look, he the flowing, the flowing water is flowing without any tributary uh, feeding it. It is flowing directly from the temple. It is not polluted. It is a specific water from the threshold of God. It goes right coming out of the temple of God, right from the altar onto the eastern gate and flowing into the, the, the outside. Then it forms a river. Then... The angel of God, which is the spirit of God now leading us, walks us through this water. Me and you were walked through this water after hearing the word of God from the temple of God. We walked through this water and we got the measurement. Our measurement then was small and people could not even understand us. Some of the people could think we are, we are, we are foolish. Some of them could say, oh, these people, uh, they're religious. They did not know that it is more than religion. Some of them said we were mentally deranged because the capacity of the mental that set up this water is beyond their fathom. And therefore, they could not understand us. To date, they still are confused about the, this river flowing from the temple of God. And I want to make it quite clear that when we obey the leading of God, and the water that is flowing from the threshold of God, especially from the altar of God, then we know that it is flowing in the right direction. Then we will walk with God. He measured a thousand cubits, which is about 1,700 1, feet. He measured that. Then I walked into that water, and the water was reaching only my knee. Sorry, my, my ankle. Then the water that reaches my ankle is not sufficient. You should thirst for more. The problem we have today is that we stage ourselves at the water that reaches our ankles, and we cannot do anything better. You cannot swim in the water that reaches your ankle. You cannot, uh, I mean, if you swim as a uh, grown-up man, uh, people will say this is, this, this is, a, uh, this is a case of uh, mental. And therefore, we, we have to walk deeper. The Bible says that he went again and measured 1,000 cubits. And we walked into the water that reaches our knee. Well, that is a good water. It is water that reaches our knee. But it is not sufficient yet. Because you cannot swim in such kind of water. What God is teaching us is one thing. That you will move you from one grace to another as a Christian. You must know where you are and what you are supposed to do. But the problem has been that the shallow waters is where most of us has come, and they cannot experience the fullness of God in them. They are underrating the potential that God has given them by them walking just on the shallow water, trying to do everything within the shallow water, while there is many more steps ahead. One more glory and another glory and another glory still lies ahead. And therefore we wrestle with one another, we quarrel with one another. We even complain that you are the one that has made this water dirty because you stepped here. You just came the other day. We've been in this water for a long time. 
because they quarrel because they step on on the same water one after the other and the water is polluted and nobody likes it and even the people outside do not want to come into that water because christians are staged in a small shallow water they don't want to move into the depth of the water so that they can enjoy the fullness of god and the glory of god and the provisions of god god is ready to give us that which we desire he said that you will ask anything in my name and i shall do it unto you therefore we have to allow ourselves to be obedient to the flow of the holy spirit when we did obey that was one step but when he wants to walk with us let's agree to walk with him so that we can experience the powerful god that has provision for his uh, children in verse 5 he said that again he measured a thousand and it was a river that i could not pass through for the water had risen and it was deep enough to swim in and this is the water that reaches uh the, the shoulder and it reaches my body and takes me now it is more than uh, i could walk in that is the abundance god is talking to he says in john 10 10 that they, this uh, the enemy came to 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 to, to kill uh, i mean to to steal to kill and to destroy but I have come that I may give you life and give you more abundantly. This is the life that is carried in the living water of God. This is the life that if you obey the word of God, you get the direction of God. This is the life that God wants to give to his children. He has the best for his children. And yet we cannot walk. We refuse to walk. We have been sitting long. We have been looking at the little things and thinking we have reached. You have not because the things of God are great ahead of you. You are more than conquerors. The Bible tells me you can step out and get that which God has allowed you to in your life. He prepared you before the foundation of the earth. He knows you deep and deep before even you were born he knew even the substance from which you will be made he knows that you are able to do greater things than what you are doing do not go into the grave with the potential that god has put in you do not sleep on the potential that god has put in you this man took me to the water that i can now swim in and that is the water that we need because we need to swim in the Holy Spirit. We need to be directed. When you are swimming, it is not you who control yourself. It is the water that controls yourself. It is the water that carries you. It is not you who carries yourself to show off who you are. It is the water which is floating with you that you have to control. Otherwise, you are gone. So it is the swimming water that you need. And uh, he went ahead and he said to me, after taking me to the water that I can swim in. Son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. This is what the spirit will tell you. He will not just do things without you understanding. He will tell, ask you, have you seen this? Have you reached here? What do you say? As I went back in 47, I saw on the bank of the river very many trees. And on the other side, on, the, on, uh, on one side and on the other side. That is the time your eyes will open to see the abundance of God. If you agree to walk with God, that is the time God is going to open up your eyes. If you can reach the floating, the water that you can swim in, you will see the abundance of God laid up for you. Seeing the very place that you thought there was nothing, the dry place that you thought there was completely nothing, you see now trees growing. You see the fruits of the tree. That is God. If you allow God to use you with the little that you have, if you allow God to use you, you will see the greatness of God in the land of the living. This is the land of the living. You will experience the powerful God that is able to transform you, change you, provide for you, heal you, walk with you, and lead you into greater things that you do not know. This is the God that we need. And therefore, my encouragement this morning is to wake up Christian to the reality that we belong to God. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are greatly made by God himself. He watches over you. He watches over me. He has inscripted you on his palm and he watches over you 24 hours. Nevertheless, he says that if you feel you are so weak that you cannot pray, pray in the spirit. 
Pray in the spirit that he may take over and then teach you how to pray. He will utter things that you do not know. He will utter things that you cannot utter with your own mouth and he will intercede for you. But also he tells you that there is a high priest, an advocate for us. That is Jesus Christ himself who is at the right side of the hand of God and he intercedes for us. Therefore, we need to go deeper into this water that we may see the greatness of God. Then in 48, and he said to me, the water flows towards the Eastern region and goes down into Araba and enters the sea. This is the Dead Sea. When the water, fl water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh. Hallelujah. The water becomes fresh. This salty water has to change. When Christians live as Christian, when Christian gets the living water, when Christians agree to move with the living water from the altar of God, when they agree to go into the, into the world, the world will change to be fresh. But the Christians have staged themselves in a shallow water and they want to work everything from that shallow water because they don't want to go deeper. The Lord is saying this morning that we should make a step and go deeper. We should follow the Holy Spirit to go deeper into our callings so that we may be able to be used of God. The other day we were watching two young ladies in Iran, in Iran and I, my tears almost rolled down. These are two young students that have been saved and they are they supplied gospel in, in Iran in places where the, the gospel is, uh, uh, is uh, if you got supplying gospel, you will be hanged. But here is the supply. Until the government said there must be a big organization here supplying Bibles because they had supplied thousands of copies secretly. And they said this organization must be supplying Bible in this country. Only to, to realize that there were two little girls. And they agreed. They had given their, li their, their lives to Jesus from Islam. And they went ahead and even uh, investigated and found them. And they were arrested. They did not know that they were two. In fact, they met in the, in the jail. <laughs> and, uh, and what happened is that God has put every effort in your line. God has put those who are going to work with you. And they, they were in jail and tortured and put in the line of those who are going to be hanged. But still, even in the jail, they preach the gospel, and some people got saved. And, 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 and they preach even to the jailer who, who got saved. And God sent his angel there by sending the people from all over the world, crying for them to be released, even the United Nations. So it came out so clearly that you are protected, and they were released. As a matter of fact, they have gone for Bible, study, Bible theological course, and now they are preaching the gospel. And the gospel is spreading in that country like a bushfire. And if you think you are sleeping with your faith that God gave you, I want to wake you up this morning to know that you have something to tell somebody about Christ. And to know that you have waters ahead of you that you can walk into and even get deeper so that you can swim in and get the fullness of God. Because what we are lacking is denying God the opportunity to reach people because we are the chosen one. We are the people he wants to use. God cannot work in void. He cannot work in the air. He has to choose somebody to work with. And therefore you and me are the people chosen in this last day to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without fear or favor. And therefore he says this, in verse 10, uh, in verse 9, he said, And wherever the river goes, every living creature that's, uh, that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish, for this water goes there, that the water of the sea may become fresh. So everything will, will live where the water goes. Everything will live where you go if you choose to go deeper. Everything will be turned to be fresh. Everything will change where you go because you have the living water of God. You have, you have God and walking in the presence of God. You have to be effective and infection, you, you have to be infective so that you are 
you affect every area that you move, that they may know that God is with you. And today I want to bring us down to know that even in this uh, uh, mass of water, even in the, in the living water where the sea was, had been formed, there was a section for the, for where there was mass, uh, they were called the swamps. And the, the Bible tells me that the place with swamps were not healed. The place with swamps were not healed. And my, my submission is that if you are in the same water, you may do everything and you think you are all right. But if you are on the swamps, you may not be healed. Remove those things that makes you be uh, put aside as just a provision of salt, but you cannot be, be healed. The swampy area never got healed, but the, the place without swamp got healed. Another thing is that this river, where now it was so deep, there was space for everybody. And the Bible tells me it had many fish. It means that the jostling and the quarreling and uh, looking at yourself as a mediocre is simply because you have not gone into the water that you can now float in, the water that you can swim. And it is said that there, there is no quarrel because everybody, every fisherman, you and me are fishermen. And we are told that we will be made fishers of men. Now we say that the fish is plenty in that water where it is deep now. The fish is plenty and everyone has a chance of getting a fish. Everyone has a chance of throwing his net and there is no, and they have a chance also of airing, airing their, their nets after, after fishing. It is today that I want let us to know that God has a lot in store for me and you and that we should put aside all those things that besets us, all those things that pulls us back, we should put aside. All those things that we see as valuable, we should put aside because God is seeing us differently. God is seeing us tools in his hand for use. And we should be careful with what we do at particular times that we do them. So we know that we are believers and poured out upon the world by the death of Christ. We know that. And therefore, through, uh, uh, though, the, though such a river has symbolic meaning, we should not miss the, pla the, the plain promise of such a river in the coming kingdom of Messiah. He is coming back. And the plain uh, explanation there is that the river in the, in, in, in the presence of God, in the coming kingdom, will flow from God himself. It will not flow from the temple. It will flow from God himself. That's why we are likened with God, because we are the children of God. He says that out of you shall flow rivers of living water. Out of you, me and you, will flow rivers of living water. We are the temple of God now, and we have this water in us, and this water must flow into the desert. Every place in the desert that is dry will be turned into a place of fruits, and a place that uh, fruits can grow. And we will grow, we'll go into, into the, the muddy waters, we'll go into the, the, sorry, the salty waters, and the salty water will turn to be fresh. This is my message today for you, to know that you have been called. You have been put aside for the kingdom of God. You have been put aside for the kingdom of God because you are seen to be capable of doing it. Otherwise, there are so many people who could have been chosen for this ministry, but you have been chosen because God has seen that you are able to do it. And if you are able to do it, then you are the right tool of God to use. Uh, yes. Then he said, and in, 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 in 40, 40, 40, 12, 47, 12 said, and on the bank on both sides of the river, there will, uh, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their, uh, their leaves will not wither, nor their fruits fail, but they will bear, fruits, uh, bear fruit every month because the water for, the, for them flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. That is what he's saying. Look at that. Look at now the position where the river has flown and has created a provisions of God on both sides. You will lack nothing. You will have enough food. You will have uh, even the fruits to eat and the leaves for food and uh, the fruits for healing. So you are 
the one that is hindering yourself. Today, I want to pray that you unlock yourself from the hindrances that you have created yourself, from the very, very hindrances that you think the devil is, has created on you. The devil has not created anything on you, but you simply have refused to move into the deeper parts of the Holy Spirit, the deeper parts of God's provision, so that you can follow the Holy Spirit one by one as he moves you in. The church today is sleeping over. The church today is seeing that uh, they have reached and therefore they come down and reach a certain stage and they are stagnated. And when they are stagnated, they actually sum up on one thing. They form a religion, but a smart religion of the day because they, they, they start well, then they, 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 they suffocate themselves with the routine work and the tradition things that they do, and they think that is all, and we wait for another Sunday. Today, I say that if you are here, and probably you have not received Christ Jesus as your personal savior, it is time to join this river. It is time to join the river that is flowing from the altar of God. This altar was built perfectly for you, and you are the altar you are the one that can make a decision within yourself to start walking without disobeying him. Because we know that many people suspend the call to, to, to do the things that God has. You have something that nobody else has. You are a chosen one. And what you have as a potential in you, nobody else has. It is only you who have that thing. You are delaying God's work because you are staying outside the temple. You are staying outside the river. You are staying outside the river. Or if you taste of the river and step on the water that reaches your, your ankle, you think you have reached. You have not reached. Yes, you have made a step. Yes, you are taking the right direction. But you have to move in. You have to move into the water that reaches your knee. You have to move into the water that you can now look back and say that this water is, is overtaking me. This water is above me. And you should learn how to swim in the water of God. If you learn how to swim in the water of God, then this water has a purpose. It is flowing towards the east. And significantly, where the east is, is where the sun rises. Significantly, you will find that many traditions and culture look at this rising of the sun. I remember very well in my culture from Africa, where the old people used to wake up in the morning. And when the very old uh, man of the homestead, he will go very early when the, when the sun is just coming up. And he will look at the sun and say, thank you, God, for uh, opening up the, the, the day for us. And they had a way of saying it. They had a name for their God. And because they knew that the rising of the, the sun is where God is. If the foolish people and illiterate people on the culture level could know that, how much more should we know as the children of God? How much more should we know that we have the presence of God within us and we can reach and do many great things? I am ready to go. That is my motto this year. I'm ready to go. I listen and God, I don't want this to pass me because there are certain things that nobody else can do except me. There is another person uh, that tells you that you cannot do this. That is impossible. And that is the devil himself. And he, he has nothing. He has no share in the kingdom. Actually, he wants you to be on his side. He wants you to fail to achieve that which God had put in you so that he can be uh, with you on the other side. He's working 24 hours to make sure that he blocks those who are weak. He blocks those who have not made a decision and he makes sure that you are put down so that at the end of the day, you will, you will not get an excuse, but you, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace and uh, into the everlasting fire of God. And that is what I want us to know that the hell was not made for any human being. Hell was made for the devil himself. And therefore we have a chance to come to Christ now. We have a chance to make our ways right 
by listening to God, by listening to God from the temple of God, by listening to God from the water that is flowing from the tent, from the from the altar of altar of God, and this water flows right in through the eastern uh, side. He it drops, it oozes. The Bible says it oozes, just drops little, little by little. Don't despise those little by little. The Bible says don't despise the the small beginning because they have a meaning in your life. Follow the water, then it will go into the water that now can reach your ankle. Then it goes to the water that can now reach your knee. The water that can reach your knee has significance because that is where the prayer is because that is where now you have to look into your prayer life and pray more that God may move you deeper into the waters that reaches your 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 your, your loin and then there you know that the loin is where the truth is the truth of the gospel is and therefore after prayer then the truth of the gospel comes in the loin where the water reaches your loin then you, your water now goes to reach up and consumes you to your shoulder and whatever. Therefore, you have a duty. You have a duty. And this duty should not go in the garbage. You should not carry yourself with that beautiful and powerful package to the graveyard. They say that in the graveyard is where we have very powerful people, people who could have been president, people who, who could have written many books, people who could have taught the gospel, people who could have done great things are lying there. And they are marked this so-and-so born on this day and died on this day with a good black card. You see, we have to move when we still have life. This work has to be done when the day is still on. Darkness is coming when nobody will be able to move. Therefore, today, my message to us all is that we move and move with the water from the temple of God. Move with this water that flows from the altar of God. Move with the water that has come from the right source. Because in that temple, God took his time to construct, him, construct the temple alone. And the instruction was coming and measurement from God's mouth. This, the window should be this much, and there should be five cubits, and the height should be this, and the door should be like this. Every area of that temple was made with precision. Every area of the temple was made in with God's hand, and God knew that he had to do so because it is his God, it is his temple. And there is no any other temple prescribed with such high precision as the temple that was pre prescribed. There is no temple again in the, in the whole land of Israel where water flows from the uh, from the from the altar. Actually, this one this was a visionary uh, temple, and it was me, you and me. It was you and me because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made for the purposes of God. He knew you. He knew even the substances in which you were made. He knew that you will be who you are. Because he had purposed it. He knew that Mia will be black skinned the way I am for the purposes of his own glory, because he created us for his own glory. And therefore, I thank God that this revelation of this portion of the Bible is for us today. Yes, Ezekiel might, might have prophesied about 2,600 years back. He even uh, worked in Babylon where he could not continue his work, but he had an encouragement to his people in Babylon because there he could not condemn them. They were going through hardship. They were going through slavery, but he encouraged them. He even could not write, but some Jewish uh, uh, pro prophets uh, just decided to collect themselves, about 120 of them, that they will compile the, com uh, the, uh, the script of, uh, of, of Ezekiel and write a, a portion for us today. We must thank God for those people, and we must thank God for having to get an opportunity also to read what was in the mind of God concerning us today through the prophet Ezekiel. We thank God for this short gospel, and I believe that every one of us is uh, have ears to hear. If you have ears to hear, hear what God is saying today. If you have ears to hear, try and walk your way into deeper waters of God. Try to walk with God from the clear water. I'm so much flabbergasted because of this water. It comes from the altar of, of God and it comes just oozing. And you know, the ground is dry. It could actually sink into the ground and not form any river. It, it, it does not have any 
tributary, I mean, uh, tributary to feed it. It is just from the altar of God. That's what it is meant to be. It is meant not to be defiled. It is meant to be just as little as it is. It is meant to see the glory of God. It is meant that people may, may see and believe that God can do what looks to be impossible to be possible before God. It is meant to be completely pure water from the altar of God. No feeding from some other rivers that it flows the way it flows. And it goes section by section. It goes to be, to be a mighty river, a river that you can now swim in and a river that you can fish in. We want to fish for people, that we can fish in and we get nice fish. The Bible tells me the fish that is found in that water are as beautiful and, and nice fish like the one we find in big, uh, big seas or big lakes. So we have to thank God that we have been given that privilege. We also have to thank God that we are the people that have been chosen and we must know our position and we must discard fear from us and walk boldly into the blessings of God from one glory to another, from one glory to another, until we realize what God called us to do. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. All. Thank you. Glory to God. We let's pray. We are to walk from